The penultimate thing I'll mention is what I'll call leaving Aspen. And let me be clear exactly what I mean, because there's nothing wrong with Aspen. But to get here and to build a life that makes you comfortable here and to thrive here, you have to learn certain rules, certain ways of comporting yourself, certain ways of behaving, certain ways of networking, <laughs> certain ways of relating to one another. And I happen to notice on this mountain that if somebody introduces a personal note into a conversation, within two minutes, somebody else will turn it into a public note. That is to say, if somebody says something intimate, people get a little nervous about that. It's sort of a social violation. So we want to talk about global warming. <laughs> and we're more comfortable when talking to each other about talking about public affairs than affairs of the heart. And that's because we, a lot of our certain professions are a little emotionally detached. And I think to really succeed in the second mountain, you have to get out of this community into communities where you can't get away with that. And it happened to me, I'm involved in a community where I have dinner every Thursday with a bunch of 20 to 24 year old kids from DC. And the first day I went into this community of kids, uh, and there were maybe 20 or 30 of them at a dinner any given time, and I met a kid named Ed, and I held up my hand to shake his hand, and he said, we don't really shake hands here, we hug here. And so he embraced me in a hug, and all the kids embraced me in a hug, and I've been going back almost every Thursday for three years, and I can't get away with my old crap. <laughs> and what they give to us is a complete intolerance of social distance. They force you to get into the intimate relationship building business. And frankly, I went with Linda out to the Central Valley, into the preschools, into the hospitals, and a lot of the people out there, mostly Latino, they force you into a second intimacy and they force you to open your heart to get out of the comfortable ways you're doing and to actually dance in public. And they give you, in, in the second mountain, I think when you go through that process, the ego is overthrown, you're not at stake anymore, you get the pleasure of gift love, of agape, which is the unconditional willing of good for the other, the equal regard for the well-being of the other, the passionate service and open sacrifice for the sake of the other, when you look at people and you're there far down the second mountain, they had just have this radiant inner light. My favorite example, I was in Frederick, Maryland with a bunch of ladies aged probably 60 to 80 who teach immigrants English and how to read. They just radiated a patience, a goodness, a kindness. They made you feel better about yourself. And there's a certain sort of joy in that. And so when you look at these people, they just radiate joyfulness. <laughs> 